This episode of Jester's Garage, we take the old trap wagon back up to Dad's. I'm taking the old Winchester Green. I love this old truck. I'm going to give her a little bit of a cool down. We've been at it since Lewiston. And now, we're going to take the old Winchester Green. Our 41 Chevy three-quarter ton truck has got a stock four-speed transmission and there's no synchro mash in it. We added a three-speed auxiliary transmission, so it's got a deep under, a direct, and an overdrive, and that overdrive basically helps us split the gears perfectly. Cars and trucks from this era had vacuum wipers. That's one of the next things on our list. find the old Winchester grade on Highway 95, just south of Lewiston by about half an hour. It's right outside of the little town called Cul-de-Sac. I'd say it's maintained pretty good nowadays, and it's certainly worth the extra time it takes to take that drive. If you're not in any big hurry, especially if you're in an old vehicle like the Trap Wagon, it's worth the time. Nothing but pleasure. There was virtually no oncoming traffic on my trip up that grade. And at the speeds I was going, it was like I fell back in time. I certainly got my exercise getting all this videoing done. I was all by myself, so so I had to drive and shoot all those pictures. Well, I love that view, but I better get up to Dad's. He's waiting for me. Once you get to the top of the grade, pretty much smooth sailing for just a handful of miles to get to the town of Winchester. Nice little lake there. They stock it with fish once in a while, so you should take your family up there and drop a hook in the water. Once you pass Winchester, now you're on the prairie. And about every seven miles, there's a little town. Legend has it, that's how far you would want to travel your horses before you watered them back in the day. This episode of Jester's Garage, it's all about the trap wagon. Dad and I are going to tell some stories about this old girl. What year did you find the trap wagon? 1991, wasn't yep. it? Yep, 91. Now, I saw her over there in Pomeroy, up against the fence there. Looked at it several times. And so I got a picture of it. And went and talked to Glenn Tietrich over there and uh, in the meantime he moved up on the hill and uh, there's no title on it but he told me he had it for 200 bucks. I remember that day you called me. He called me and says guess what I bought and I go what? And you said how about that 41 Chevrolet trap wagon over there at Tahoe, right? Didn't you see it before? Oh yeah, I drove by it. Every time I drove that way, I seen this truck. In fact, as I took a couple pictures also. I know you did. Yeah, that was a really, really, I just like, dude, that's cool. Yeah. When you first got it, we towed it to a soap, right? That's right. Yeah, we actually got it running at my place. I think that was the first place it was, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And I didn't even have a shop. It was sitting alongside the house. I think we pulled the hood off or whatever, we put a can of gas on top of the cowl, 
put a little bit of oil in the cylinders, got it to crank over. And the clutch was stuck. Yeah, put a battery in it and cranked her over. She fired up, mm -hmm. uh, but you couldn't drive it because it didn't have brakes and it didn't have clutch. The clutch was stuck engaged, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it didn't take as long to get it going. Mm -hmm. And we uh, got it running, had to put a new, I remember that little hose underneath the gas tank, had to change that because right. the gas wasn't coming through. Right. As soon as we got it running, got inspected, there's no there's no title on it. Right. And so I had uh, Randy Squires inspect that. Two weeks later, I had my title. Perfect. Yeah. Because it had never had a title. It, yeah. It, it was a farm <laughs> truck that had a 15 mile radius sticker on the windshield. That's and right. it had been that way for 50 years. Yeah. And Mrs. Tetrix used to drive this to town uh, all the time. That was her main go to parks rig. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I actually took her for riding this yeah. up at Pomeroy right. uh, at the show up there uh, before she passed away. So then I drove it up to Craigmont and I drove it that way for a number of years just in this old beat up red patina, mm -hmm. put a different bed on it. Right. And just the old original seat. Mm -hmm. It was my choice truck. Right. Because I used to love the truck when I was young. Right. In Colorado. Yep. And so now I got my own. And it was special to me too because my first rig was a truck just like that. Still have it. But up there, Anatone. Yeah, got it in Anatone. Yeah, that thing was pretty much as is other than some fresh-ish tires, gas, oil, some brakes and stuff. You drove it around Craigmont forever. Mm -hmm. About probably 10 years. Wow. And yeah. uh, put in the parade a couple times. Yeah. Run around here. Yeah, we blew it apart somewhere in the, I would say 97. I bet you it was only about six years that you drove it because that paint is 25 years old. It's painted 99. And we probably worked on it for two solid years. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Well, you know, the interesting thing you told me one day, you said, Dad, let's get serious about that 41, because I want to do it as a project with you, not a legacy. Right. That was after it set for nine years. So that would have been like in 08, because mm -hmm. we blew it apart and worked on it every other weekend. You bought the building, and I broke ground on the addition. And that thing set. And then when I was done and you were done, we never got back to it. We had other things going on. So it had been like 08 when I says, hey, I was looking at the picture of us standing next to the truck and there was no doors, no glass, no nothing, no fenders on it. And it was like, we need to get this thing together. Because I could see enough time going by and then something happening to you. And I guess I got to put my dad's truck together. We never did finish it. But I can honestly say that we've enjoyed that truck for 12 years now. I had dad's truck down here for probably over two months, two and a half months, something like that. Anyway, I enjoyed it for like five different occasions, all within one week, things leaking oil everywhere. It was leaking out the main seal in the back of the engine, and it was leaking out the right rear axle seal. There was a handful of other things I wanted to do to it, but once I got it up on blocks, I had to pretty much drop the crank about three-eighths of an inch order to get that seal changed. So that was consuming. Probably put in four to six hours every weekend, and I did it on the other side of my place. So I had to go back and forth about 100 feet every time I wanted a stinking wrench. A little bit frustrating, so I learned my lesson. Do everything in your shop. Don't try to do something in the garage. Anyhow, I got those videos coming up. If you want to learn how to do a seal, if you want to learn from the stuff that I learned, it, it, it'll be a good flick. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this Jester's Garage thing. Taking a ride with me up the old Winchester grade, the trap wagon, and hanging out with my dad and I in his shop, telling stories about how that thing was built. Give me a thumbs up if you'd like to. We'll see you next time on Jester's Garage.